Hey developers, what 10 things should a JavaScript developer know today? Let's talk about it. Hey developers, before we begin, let me remind you that Udemy is having a $10 sale. You can get every course on their whole catalog for $10. All you need to do is click on one of those links below. I have three li links to some of my favorite courses on Udemy that I think you should take if you are a beginning web developer or even if you're a little bit into JavaScript and you wanna know a little bit more. Just to let you know, those are affiliate links. So if you click on them, I do get a little bit of money. So in today's topic, I am talking about 10 things a serious JavaScript developer should know. I actually got this list off of Reddit. Reddit is a website where anybody can submit articles and posts to. And in their JavaScript subreddit, this topic came up and it had a lot of interesting questions or a lot of interesting answers to it. And some people even propose some new questions. So if you're watching this video, I wanna, what, I wanna know from you first, what do you think a serious JavaScript developer should know right now? leave a comment below with what you think they should know. And I will go through the top 10 things that they came up with on the number one voted up comment. Let's take a look. So you can see here, this is the what 10 things should a serious JavaScript developer should know. And there's quite a bit of comments here, but this is their list. So I thought I would go through it and talk to you what I think of each one of these suggestions. And we'll go through it now. So they recommend that if you're serious about JavaScript that you should know scope. And it says here, if you don't think, if you don't understand the, this intimately, then you aren't that serious about this language. This is the number one point intentionally and I cannot stress it enough. Uh, scope, maybe, I mean, this is kind of an interesting question. JavaScript, there's a lot of different elements that make up this scripting language and Scope is definitely important, but I think in everyday life when you're a JavaScript developer that you run into scope problems every now and then, you might see bugs on it. You may not, uh, you might see a little bit of problems here and there, but I don't know if this is would be like the number one thing you need to intimately understand <laughs> to be a serious developer, whatever that means. So I, I definitely think that that's a little high on the list here, but granted it's important. You should know the differences and between global scope and local scope and also not to get confused with context, but that's a different conversation. So I'm not gonna go into exactly the intimate, uh, the details on each one of these things, but I definitely think that's something you should know between like your globals, like your locals, lets, um, consts, things like that. But let's move on. Architecture, you don't have to be a master software architect, but if you cannot perform some basic planning and put pieces together without massive layers of tooling, you're an imposter. So this kind of kind of digs a nail. I guess it, it, it digs into people saying that, you know, don't rely on your JavaScript frameworks and libraries to come up with the architecture of your program. You should really understand how to be good an architect of a program. And I definitely see like if you're a senior level developer that this is uh, an important aspect to understand maybe these different patterns like the MVC pattern, and how to architect, architect your program from scratch is a good idea. I, I definitely agree for that. Um, more of a senior level, I don't know, they're, call, they're talking about a serious JavaScript developer. Um, that might be more of like a senior level or, or I don't know, someone that's architecting a new app. And a lot of times when you're in, a, in an environment and you're working as a web developer, you don't always get to architect everything from the start, from the beginning. And if you do use a framework, a lot of times they do handle a lot of that architecture for you, but it's at least good to understand how all these pieces fit together. This is an interesting one. It talks about the DOM, the do document object model. It's very common to see developers hiding from the DOM by layers of abstraction and other stupid crap. Query selectors are great, but are also 2800 slower than the standard DOM methods. This isn't trivial. So he goes on to say that you should really understand the, do the document object model, even links to this art article that explains what the DOM is and the different layers of the DOM and the history of it, which is actually, by the way, a great article. And I'll link some of these links in the show notes below, in the description below. And it talks about using the get element by ID, by accessing DOM elements that way, instead of using query selectors. Um, and I think this, and someone said too in the comments below here, 
on this one is that it's not 2,800 times slower. That's kind of a, a large number, but it is it is slower than than using it. And someone else said, well, when he meant query, query selectors, are we talking about inside the DOM, the DOM query selectors, the DOM API query selectors, are we talking something like jQuery? But I think it's valid in both aspects, but it's definitely not that much slower. And I agree that if you can use pure DOM manipulation by using the get element IDs, um, you should use that and you shouldn't use tons of layers of abstraction. That pretty much makes sense. I think that belongs on the list here. This is a controversial one, Node.js. If you're a serious developer, should have you should have a pretty solid grasp of how to walk the file system. You should understand how to conveniently read files as text or less conveniently read files as bit for bit binary buffers. Uh, definitely knowing Node.js overall as a JavaScript developer is, is handy for sure. Uh, if you especially when you're in projects where you're going to be writing the front end and the back end in JavaScript. Um, this is kind of feels a little odd that he wants you to make sure you understand how to walk the file system. Definitely reading in files, understanding how to read in bits and bytes are important. But it seems like this would be like a Stack Overflow thing that uh, a serious developer, if they don't use Node.js that much, would just look it up. I don't know if that's really makes you a serious developer or not. Definitely having some general knowledge in Node.js is important. Timing and asynchronous operations, events, timers, network requests are all asynchronous and, and separate from each other and exist both in Node and in the browser. You have to be able to understand how to work with callbacks and promises. I mean, that's really important. Definitely when you're dealing with a, a lot of JavaScript code and you're dealing with a lot of callback hell, understanding how to deal with callbacks and the different libraries and what that all means, how to do, uh, deal with different timers, I would say that's pretty important. It's, uh, I, I would include that on in my list too. Accessibility, the interactions imposed by JavaScript can present accessibility barriers. A serious JavaScript developer is already familiar with this WCAG 2.0 and knows how to work with its recommendations or when to push back and violating business requirements. I've seen this a lot, especially a lot of these lists that say you have to be a serious developer, you need to know accessibility. I would push back on that, say that that is a good practice in web development, especially for all the different types of screen readers and, and the visually impaired out there and things like that, so that they can properly use your web page correctly. I don't think that's a like a, a I don't think that's super important, especially if you're in a, an environment where they don't value that, if you have upper management or people in your organization that doesn't think accessibility is that important. I don't see like a huge issue with not knowing the ins and outs of it. Uh, it's certainly something that you should be aware of. And if the project calls for it, you should try to, to use it. But I don't think that's super important. I, and if you disagree, please let me know below. Security, you need to have at least basic understanding of security violations, security controls, and privacy. So you don't have to be a CISSB, but you need to be able to supply recommendations, avoid obvious failures. So, I mean, yeah, I think this is, is pretty good. I, like this says here, you don't have to be a super security expert, but know some basics of cross-site scripting to sanitizing your inputs, things like that, where you're making sure that you're checking on the, the server side for anything that comes from the browser and not relying solely on the front end. Yeah, for sure, those things are important and any good application and web developers should know a little bit about security. Someone in the comments actually has mentioned that it wasn't that important. They were arguing that security is one of those things that you can always outsource later on, like have your developers focus on creating an app and then have some third party come in and do like a security assessment. I guess that would make sense for a larger Fortune 500 company. However, I kind of agree that you should know at least some basics and larger and more complicated your app gets with more users, then you may want to think about bringing in some third party companies to do some kind of security audit for you. And you, you find out a lot of times with these security audits that the weakest link is not the code itself, but the people inside the organization. It's a lot easier to, to social engineer some tech support guy to give out a password to a user or accidentally slip up and open up an email attachment than it is to like find some vulnerability in some cross-site scripting exploit. It just, security is, is a fickle thing. 
data structures. You need to understand how to organize data in a way that allows the fastest possible execution without compromising maintenance. Yeah, this is a, a good point. Definitely having some basic data structure knowledge. Be, be aware of the common data structures, queues, lists, um, things like that where you can manipulate them inside the JavaScript language. I think you can certainly, if you learn algorithms, that would probably be going along with this. I've talked about that before where you don't necessarily need to know the fundamentals of computer science and algorithms to be a web developer, but I think as you start learning those things, you can become a better web developer and a better programmer in general. So understanding things like a, things like a binary search tree and things like that could, could definitely be help, feel, helpful for you. Presentation semantics, you really need to have basic understanding how to properly organize the content your users will consume and how to present in a consumable way efficiently. This is a good point, but I don't know if this is really important. I mean, it says you can only learn it from experience. You might think CSS and HTML are simple skills. I would agree with this last line that but you're absolutely wrong that CSS and HTML and the design of things and the way you present is a skill within itself and that it's not something you can easily learn, especially if you don't have that type of, I don't know, functionality or brain. Your brain just doesn't work that way. It's going to take a longer time. I have the idea that anybody can learn anything that if it take enough time and effort, people be, can become experts in things. I don't think anybody has a fixed mind. I think everyone, even people that are bad at math, if they work hard on it, they can get just as good as most people out there. So I don't know, this presentation semantics, I think it's important, but I don't know if it's like in the top list of serious things people should know. It, it's certainly something you, as you, go on as a web developer, you're going to start seeing these patterns, the way people are putting HTML, CSS together. And as a JavaScript developer, you should understand how that relates and when you should be doing certain things. And then last, lastly, he puts knowing when to avoid the BS. Many developers lack the years of experience to be confident in their performance. So some of these developers will try to fake it. Don't be an imposter because everybody will see straight through it. Hoping mounds, abstraction, tooling, framework, compilers, and other bullshit will save you just bogs down your application, screws over the teammates. If you aren't confident, then be honest in, about that and seek mentorship or get involved with open source software outside of work. That's kind of interesting, uh, kind of an interesting idea. It's, I think a lot of new developers go over this imposter syndrome where they don't think they're good enough to be a software developer. And to kind of having saying something like this is like, don't be an imposter because everybody will see straight through it. It kind of hits at the insecurities of new developers that, you know, they shouldn't act confident that they should, you know, not try because they, they don't know what they're doing and that they're just fooling everyone because using layers of abstraction. They don't really understand what's happening underneath it. Uh, I, I don't agree with this. You know, it doesn't like, I understand that if you are a new developer, or you're using some of these frameworks and you're using layers of abstraction, you may not understand the underlying, everything underlying it, but you're getting stuff done. And I think that's an important quality is not just the academics and understanding all the layers of abstraction all the way down to the byte code, but being able to, to construct something that's useful and makes sense and you can put out there and, and, and being able to take critical feedback and a lot of these, a lot of web developers and web agencies have places where they do code reviews or have people stand up and they show their code and being able to take that feedback and get better and improve is important. But I shouldn't, I don't think we should be shaming people for, uh, for people trying to fake it. As he says that people are just going out there and, and pretending like they're web developers, but they're really not because they don't understand it. We should be, you know, you should go out there being confident. Even if you're a brand new developer, you should put out stuff out there and see what people think of it and let them come back to you with what they think of it. You shouldn't be like, like, oh, I, I got to be really meek and, and not go out there because people think I'm going to be faking or imposter. I can't fake it. I, I could act like a newbie. No, put out your stuff out there. Be confident. Realize that it's not perfect, that people are going to criticize it, be able to take that feedback and get better. So that's what I think about that last comment. So those are just the 10 things I saw in this Reddit article. Agree or disagree, if I misspoke on anything, leave a comment below. Once again, 
Thank you for watching. If you like these videos, click that subscribe button. And if you really like it, click that alert button and you'll get notified every time I bring out a video. Thanks and take care.